some of our brothers are very upset, not happy about what Farrakhan has said about Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, the Black Power General. So when I, she said that, I looked at my brother, and I hope that I'm not being out of place when I say this. I had a wonderful helper in Brother Khalid Muhammad. I met him as a student at, at uh, Dillard University in Louisiana. He had a big uh, medallion of Brother Malcolm on his chest. Oh God. And he came to the nation. Such a beautiful person inside. When he saw his brother in a bad shape, Khaled would go and sit down on the curb with him and talk to him and pick him up and bring him to the mosque and put him in the shower and get some clothes and put it on him. That's the kind of heart he had. But something was disturbing him. He didn't have the best relationship with his mother. He was in foster homes and only God knows what happens to our children when they're in these places and so he always felt that he had to be more macho than anybody else and I tried to civilize him and tell him how you can be a statesman but you want to fight all the time and you know show off this kind of power and, and I didn't realize that my brother was offended affected rather by some abuse you don't have to hate one leader to love another leader. So you don't have to hate Harriet Tubman to love Frederick Douglass. And you don't have to hate Frederick Douglass to love Harriet Tubman. You don't have to hate W.E.B. Du Bois to love the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey. You don't have to hate Booker T. Washington to love W.E.B. Du Bois. You don't have to hate the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to love Malcolm X. You don't have to hate Martin Luther King Jr. to love Kwame Ture. And you don't have to hate Farrakhan in order to love the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. You just have to be bold enough to point out the positives and the negatives in each one of those that went before us and learn from the positives as well as the negatives. Each one of them brought something valuable to us. We need to stop being so forgiving of the enemy of nature and the enemy of the black man and black woman, the black family. And we need to be more forgiving and understanding of those that have done what they did based on the love they had for black people. So each and every one of those leaders loved black people. They expressed it in different ways. Much like some folks love black people today. And we tend, some of us tend to not just disagree with them, but almost hate them. The mess I mean the Jesse Jacksons of the world. The Al Sharptons of the world. The Farrakhans of the world. Some of us hate these brothers. How can you hate any black person that's done anything for black people and love the enemy? 
the bitter enemy of not only your people, but the enemy of nature itself. That's the only thing you need to think about. Hating. In fact, you should have at least a dislike for white supremacy. But most of you, no matter how conscious you are, have the nerve to love and participate in and support and help to maintain white supremacy and say out the other side of your mouth how much you hate black leaders. Even as foolish and treasonous as Ray Hagan's appears to be. You can't hate Ray Hagan's and still direct our people to help to maintain and sustain white supremacy. It doesn't make any sense. You can't put a hit out, if you will, on any black leader if you're not going to put a hit out on white supremacy. So Khalid was abused, according to Farrakhan. Khalid liked to fight all the time, according to Farrakhan. Do we have to hate Farrakhan for making that statement? With everything that Farrakhan has done for us? In fact, those of us that were awakened, that were motivated to fight for our people by the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, Oh, Farrakhan is ironically as it is. We owe Farrakhan for giving us the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. So we can disagree with Farrakhan. That's cool. We can disagree with anybody. Nobody's perfect. And I know I might get in a hot seat because I said that with my brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam. But ain't nobody perfect. We all can be critiqued. But looking back on my own life, I can say as many broken pieces as I have in my life currently, as damaged as I am, I can say that I'm happy to have gone through what I've gone through in my life. Because it is what shaped and mold, molded me into what I am today. So I can say, while thinking about the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, so he may have been abused, so what? It resulted in us having one of the most fearless, tireless black freedom fighter in the 20th century. This has been Dr. Akabo Wakatu. Who's out to the pigs when they pullin' me up?